you, Deputy. Um, I now call Deputy Desi Ellis. Gorau Mahagut, last count card. Tom P and B show on top of Tucker Fod, the high Dainra Nadini, Gaharaha Minas, a Suki show, August Kalini. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to discuss this incredibly important issue tonight and speak on behalf of a group of very brave and strong people, those who survived what I have little doubt is the absolute worst injustice ever visited upon Irish people by other Irish people. The story of the Magdalene Laundries is the kind of horrific catalogue of grinding injustice that every new piece of information still shocks us, despite all that has come already. There is no numbing, no ability to turn away. As legislators, as so-called leaders, we will be nothing but failures, no matter what we achieve otherwise, if we do not do all we can to bring a just and honest close to this most shameful and sad chapter in Irish life. A chapter which left that only those who suffered at the hands of the laundries can really be called innocent. The term laundry or institution, I feel, should possibly be banned from use and discussion of these places. We should call them what they were, prisons. Not prisons for criminals, but for women, innocent women and children, only guilty of being born a gender, hated, feared or disrespected by the church and state of the day. It would be convenient for us to shift the blame totally onto the church and the order who carried out these acts. But the state who funded them directly and indirectly is guilty also. Silence in action, apathy and collaboration are not the deeds of the innocent. This state allowed the Catholic Church free reign for many years. Some clergy were and are good, decent, genuine people. But it is now an undeniable fact that the Church was riddled in this country with people who lacked the most basic humanity, treating women and children especially like nothing more than their property, useful but deserving of nothing but hate, violence and abuse. The state failed even to inspect these prisons ever. Not once ever after being designated as factories due to the washing of clothes for use externally. The 1955 Factory Act stated that all operations covered by the Act were required to follow health and safety, abide by employment law, and that the state had the power to inspect conditions at these prisons. Of course, we know, we know none of these were avoided by and none of the law was applied. The Magdalene prisons were above the law. Not once was a laundry inspected, despite very high inspection rates for other factories and a total of 10 laundries operating in this state. It is almost impossible to believe that it was not a concerted decision to not inspect the laundries, knowing just what would be found and the trouble it would cause. Minister Bruton, though in a response to a parliamentary question recently on why they were not inspected, simply quipped that entitlement and requirement are not the same thing. Not good enough, I feel. But what will the government do for these people who suffered at the hands of the state? The Minister for Education, Michael Woods, in 2010, tipped his hat to them in the debates over the Residential Institutions Redress Scheme but offered nothing in the way of saying how it excluded from it their just campaign for redress would be responded to. Still they wait. A committee has been set up to establish the extent of state involvement, which everyone knows is fact. I wish it good luck and welcome it, but it will not offer any resolutions. This state had a duty of care to its citizens. These women and girls, it failed utterly to protect these people. And worse, it cooperated in their persecution. Women and girls were kidnapped, abused, beaten, enslaved, and told it was them who were in the wrong. I would also like to mention the Bethany home survivors and victims. Between 1922 and 1949, more than 220 children died in Bethany homes, and 219 were buried in unmarked graves in Mount Jerome Cemetery. These people are often forgotten, but they are equally deserving of justice. Bethany Home was essentially the Magdalene Laundry for Protestant women. Its survivors 
campaign for justice also. They seek justice and truth. Bethany Home survivors must get redress. They must get an apology and they must be remembered. Across the world, people remember and memorialize the victims of injustice. They build monuments, erect plaques and statues so that they will never forget and those who come after them will know that these crimes should never be allowed to happen again. The state must apologize. It must say never again. It must make the horror of the laundry seem worse with every year by comparison to the humanity and care of the nation it carves out. And it must now give redress and support to the survivors of these crimes immediately. Tom Major Glory Takiok Clitohagan PMB Shot.